What is all of this salt all over the new tablecloth? Your dog likes salt. Well, she's carnivore. <laughs> so I went to put her in her crate so that she's not like jumping up on the table while we're filming Kitty on the couch. She destroyed it. And I find her chewing on like this little thing of red salt. At least it's not like something has xylitol in it, but I guess she has really good taste because she likes Redmond too. Yeah. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 108. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 275 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. We did not plan on matching. No, I just look really good in this blue shirt, and it hides all of my, like, man boobs. Okay, <laughs> Number one, I love that you just said that that you look good. I like you describing yourself in, in a in a positive light. I put this jacket on because I just got it at the thrift store because I am rewarding myself for doing good this week. For doing good this week, I have worked out every single day this I week. I am so proud of you. And and I have not gone easy on myself. I have done the challenge, but I'm doing it every day because I'm a little bit afraid. When you get sore in an area, if I don't just keep going, I'll My be like- My thighs are killing me right now. I'll be like, I'm, you know, I don't feel good anymore. So right. yeah, I bought a ton of new tank tops too. <laughs> because they're like a dollar a piece. I got, this was $2. That looks amazing on you too. I can't pass that up. So speaking of buying things, we bought something yesterday that I didn't think we would ever buy. I actually texted John Paul, who's way into CrossFit and has like a whole CrossFit gym in his garage. He's like, who are my parents? And, and I said, look what we bought. And we bought like horse stall mats, which are basically these giant four foot by six foot rubber mats that are three quarter inch thick. And we lined half of the garage with it so that we could actually work, work out. out. Like, and this is not going to be a just this month thing. I think we're going to keep trying to do this. Oh, no, I'm all in. Especially, well, $200 in rubber mats, I think we're in it for a while anyway. Well, you know how it is with <laughs> us. Like, if I've got money in it, I'm going to use it. But, yeah, I really feel good. But it, there's been kind of a mind switch going on in my, in my mind. Okay. okay. And that is embracing the body type that I think I'm going to end up with by the end of this year, hopefully, which will be more muscular looking. I think you take a snapshot in high school. St tell me if you think I'm wrong. I think you take a snapshot in high school when you're very impressionable about what looks good on, on whatever, you know, you, you know, you are, whether you're a girl or a guy. Unfortunately, my standard of beauty was in the 90s when it was Kate Moss and Fiona Apple and Winona Ryder in Reality Bites. And it was basically like heroin chic. Right. Like everybody was super, super thin, no muscle definition at all. And so I kind of set that as, as like my looks goal. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and that's not going to happen. Right. And But I don't think it was going to happen anyway. I don't think I was built... <laughs> to look like Fiona Apple. So now I've got to switch my mind into thinking like, okay, you're you're gonna be bulked up here more. You're gonna maybe be a little bit- I'm excited about that Broader, actually. really? I was afraid that you wouldn't find it attractive. No, I'm like super excited about that. Yeah. So, so if you don't know what we're talking about, maybe you're new to our channel. We're in the middle of our April No Joke Challenge with Bronson Dant from Apex Training. I'm gonna leave a link for him down below. And he's joining us awesome. every Wednesday to uh, do a live stream. And he's basically, he's a fitness coach. And he really talks about one-to-one -one eating, which is what we talk about with eating a higher protein, but still keeping your carbs under 20. 
using your carbs and your fat as your fuel. We have an entire video on that. I'm going to leave it up above Rachel's head. And he is coaching our group for the entire month in what we're calling the no joke challenge. And speaking of no joke, this week was April 1st. And seriously, it, it was. It was. I just have to say one thing about Bronson, and that is he has videos for every single workout, whether yeah. it's the pre-workout no or the workout. But what gets me is I feel like he has a camera on me working out because he will actually demonstrate like if you're doing it like this, don't do that. Like this, <laughs> this is not what your mountain climber should look like. And I'm like, that is exactly what my mountain climber looks like and I've got to fix it. But I think it's funny that he's actually anticipated for how I'm going to do it wrong exactly. It's funny, you know, when you're talking about Bronson, like we're not gonna do a whole CrossFit gym in our garage. We don't have enough room, but um, we have exercise bands, which yeah. I've tied off to like the garage doors because we have hurricane doors. So with the hurricane doors, they're you know made to withstand these winds. So I figure putting them on the you know, like the support for that is great. I am looking for something called a flat bench is the one thing I want, which is just like a little bench that you sit on so that you don't have to use our footstool. Oh, and you can kind of sit on there and do curls and do push ups. Is that what the, he's demonstrating in the video? Yeah, it's with. just like a flat bench. So I'm yeah. trying to find. They're expensive though. They're like two hundred bucks. So I'm looking like all over offer up. But back to April first. Yes, no, April first. So. I generally don't get got on April Fool's Day. Like I know April Fool's and I generally don't get got, if that makes sense. Yeah, like even we, somebody um, from our staff at church like sent a thing like, oh, Chick-fil-A is starting to sell burgers. And I was like, no. Uh uh, I'm not falling for it. Right. But you got totally. I taken got in. got. I got got where I was like yelling at the top of my lungs, yelling at my computer. I'm like, what is wrong with this person? And I and let me just let me just show you. So yeah. I got got okay by Renee. Renee okay, <laughs> so Renee puts this in our Facebook group. And it says, I need to speak to the manager of this group. Can admins of this group please do a better job, but she actually doesn't even say please, right? Of monitoring who's allowed in here, please. We have a new she member, says, there it is. an elderly man who has been privately messaging members, sending them naked pictures of himself in nasty poses along with close-ups of his unmentionables. At this point, I have stopped reading, right? Yeah, he... And it says, he is offering an iPhone 8 in exchange for sexual favors. I'm especially bothered because it turned out to be an iPhone 6, and <laughs> obviously something went wrong with that. It's super slow, and the caps lock is stuck on, so thank you, April Fools. Well, I didn't get to that part. Now, here's the thing. So I am screaming at the top of my lungs, why would she post this in here? But you have to know this. Renee is an admin for our group. So if there's somebody that's sending naked pictures, she could stop him. She could she could simply stop him and yeah. remove him from the group. And I am yelling like, why? Why? I don't understand. And Rachel's like, well, I don't get it. Like, why are you so upset? I'm like, because, and she doesn't understand why I'm upset. No. I'm, because she hasn't doesn't realize this is an April Fool's joke either. No. And so she is sitting there going, you know, Here's the thing, and I'm like, don't you understand? She is an admin, so why would she put this post up there and tell somebody that's going on as opposed to just doing it? And Rachel's going, well, I probably am the person who let him in. Yeah, because if if I, if you you know, because sometimes I'm so afraid that like somebody is trying to get in our group and like hopefully get help, and so sometimes if they don't answer all the questions, you just immediately I will let she him lets in everybody anyway. In. And so then Joe is like, you've let some sort of crazy person in that's sending naked pictures to people. And then Renee is not booting him for some reason. And so you have to understand, we have, when you join our group, we have some questions Which that you have to, to, and they're simple questions. Number one, to make sure you're not a bot. Right. Okay. And number two, it, it makes sure that you read our rules. So... Rachel, when, when you pick it up, if you answer all of the questions, it will automatically allow you in so that you don't have to wait for us because again, we wanna make sure you get into the group and you can get your questions in. So yeah. if you answer all the questions, you get into the group. If you don't, you've gotta wait for a moderator to read the person and probably contact them and say, hey, you, you need to answer person? the questions. Yeah. Rachel doesn't do that. Rachel just picks it up. And I didn't know this until this morning where it said there were like 25 people waiting for approval. 
and I didn't have time to go through it because I was in the middle of preparing comments. And in this couple of minutes, Rachel comes home and like approves them all. Yeah. And so she was like, well, you know, here's the thing. I just, I don't want to see anybody like not get lit. I'm like, wait a second. You have a problem with seeing one person waiting in the group. But if I pick up your phone, yeah, you have 500 unread emails or like at least 150 unlistened to voicemails. Well, hey, I, I don't get that. I will eventually get back to Joanne Fabrics. OK, eventually I will get back to them, but I'm worried about people. So, yeah, sometimes I will like let people in. So I thought, oh, dear Lord, Joe is going to kill me because I'm probably the one that let this crazy person in. And then we read April Fool's and she got us so, so Renee, good. You got us. You got us. You got us. Man. So speaking of the Facebook family group, um, a little bit of housekeeping. We have added two rules into our group. And since a lot of you are already in there and you probably don't go back and look at what the rules are, we're just kind of updating everybody just because we don't want to have any issues. And that is there's two new rules in our Facebook group. And number one, there's no talking politics. Okay. We are, yeah. we're here to talk about keto, to encourage one another. Politics can be a volatile subject. Yes. So we are not talking about politics in our group. If you start posting about politics, we are going to delete the posts. And it's then out of there. if you continue, we're going to ask you to politely leave the group. Uh, the other one is, is we're not discussing um, any kind of wearing mask, whether you should wear a mask or not wear a mask, and also whether or not we should or shouldn't get vaccines. Because again, it's a touchy subject. People have strong opinions one way or the other, and that has nothing to do with the keto lifestyle. So no. please don't be putting any of those kind of posts into the Facebook group because we're just going to have to delete them anyway. It is so important that we get the message of keto out and mm -hmm. we help to provide support. People already have to deal with others in their realm of influence, whether it's their family members, sometimes it's their partner, it's somebody at work or they go to church. They're already dealing with people that aren't doing things exactly like they are with this keto diet. We do not need to add any more layers of obstacles where someone feels like they're the only one that thinks a certain way. Right. That is just not our, that is just not our way of doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and along with that, just a reminder is that please do not give medical advice. It's one thing to say, hey, this is what I'm doing. But if somebody goes, hey, I don't know what I should do in this medical situation, just yes. be careful about not giving medical advice. So if somebody's giving a tremendous amount of medical advice, uh, one of the admins is probably going to turn off comments on there. Thank you for and that. And it's one thing, again, to, you know, just... It's one thing to say like, hey, what are your thoughts on statins? And someone go like, hey, I've decided to not take statins anymore, but don't go in there and blatantly say, you shouldn't take statins because statins are bad. And we don't know that person's medical history. Exactly. I will tell you what I do, but I'm not gonna tell you what I think you should do. I'm always gonna tell you like, maybe find a different doctor if your doctor is opposed to it, but you feel firmly that you shouldn't be taking it. And, you know, those kind of situations. And there's other like groups where they, talk about more medical things like Dr. Berry or Ask Nurse Cindy on yep. Facebook. She is incredible. They're medical professionals. And they're actually medical professionals. Right. And so they can actually speak into a situation. So if someone's giving medical advice and, and it's not correct, they would be able to correct it. Whereas Joe and I, you know, yeah. wouldn't know what we're looking at. And we don't want anybody to like make a bad decision. Yeah. So to onto some positive stuff though. Yes. We had the CHOP challenge that started this week too. So we have two challenges going on. We have the Bronson challenge and you could be participating in that and not in the CHOP challenge. Yeah. Or you could be doing the CHOP challenge and not the Bronson challenge. Or you could be doing none of them. Or doing you could be doing Easter both egg. of them. You could you do the Easter the, egg. Yes. So the CHOP challenge has been really cool. So Rachel put together this entire list of like these really interesting foods. Some of them are things we have on a regular basis, some of the things that you like really lamb. don't use that often, like I, lamb. We or, don't eat that a lot. Or chuck eye steak, yeah. right? Or ham steaks, things like that. And I and obviously I'm not going to get to everybody's favorites. We were we were talking in um Heath and Shelley's Friday night uh meal and some people were saying like, wow, I wish there was more seafood mm -hmm. in this. But I I tried to make it number one inexpensive because you know I love lobster too, but maybe that would be cost prohibitive right. for somebody. Whereas like chicken thighs, we were able to get that really cheap today. I got them cheap at Whole Foods. Right. <laughs> 
So no. that's what I was kind of looking for is like what would be very inexpensive and also maybe, you know, push the boundaries a little bit, but not too much. Like for us, lamb is really out there. Mm -hmm. Like we don't use that, you know, normally. But um, but yeah, so and here's the thing. This isn't the last month. If you guys like this, we can do this again sometime in the year and we'll get some different proteins in it as a challenge. It's been really cool looking at our Facebook group to see like some of the different things. But we do want to say again, you don't have to do the chopped challenge. No. And also that's not like intended to be the only thing you eat that day. It's just like, can you incorporate this food somehow into your day? Yeah. And what are you doing with it? You know, are you creating something different? Like today when we're filming this, we've got chicken thighs. You could be making our Mexican shredded chicken. Yes. You could be roasting them in the oven. I know Christopher talked about putting them like with bacon. I'm making like a Cajun one. So there's, it's like trying new things. Rachel's trying to put up ideas every day on Instagram. But again, it doesn't have to be the only thing you're eating the day. It's, hey, you want to, Think about trying a different food that maybe you don't use on a normal basis. I love it. And my favorite thing is when we get messages back from people who are like, I thought I didn't like this mm -hmm. protein. And now I've tried it. I've been on keto for a while. Your tastes change mm -hmm. over time. They really do. I mean, you know, it, what was used to be super salty before for you is right. not salty enough. Now, right. you know, I mean, all of your tastes change and some of the proteins that I would never have eaten before, like chicken thighs is one of them, Right. are now I enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I had salmon, even though it wasn't part of the challenge, I know it's coming up. I mean, I had a salmon when we were, you know, fit camping. I had the tuna when we were camping. And really I'm like, good. hey, I actually like this now. So your tastes do change. So sometimes it's nice to kind of, you know, revisit foods that you maybe you haven't had in a long time or you used to not like. I mean, I know Christopher even had that with like a keto brick, right? Oh yeah. And I mean, and seeing how creative everybody is. That's mm -hmm. why I enjoy the the egg decorating challenge every year too. So you and and remember, post them um, like this is Monday when you're seeing this. So you have until our Thursday night live stream to get, you know, those things decorated and and into the Facebook group in case you want to maybe win an award. Um but it, it's neat to see how creative everybody is. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Now, don't forget also during our our live on Thursday, we will be picking the winner for the Keto Club box, the Keto Chow Club box. We're going to be picking the winner. Now, somebody did leave us a comment like, I please stop picking the winners during the lives. Um, I'm not sure why they don't want us to pick the winner during the live, um, but if you're worried about your name, not, you know, about not seeing, I mean, this is just how we do. We don't want to have a separate video. We, we have enough videos. We used to do that. We used to do that. And it just kind of like Probably flutters up everything. But again, when we do pick them during the live, most of the time we will post or we do actually post who the winner is in our Facebook group. But just know that, hey, we said it's gonna be during a live and just scan through the live. It's just the easiest way for us to do it without having to come back and make another video for, you know, like who won a certain thing. Yeah, because sometimes people are very disappointed about that too, mm -hmm. because it's just a winner video. And then they're, they were thinking that we were going to do like, you know, a review or something. And we try to be open and honest and show you guys, this is who the winner is, instead of us just secretly picking a winner and just trying to contact that winner. I, we like just putting it out there. You guys see us actually pick the person. Wow, 15 times in a row, our son Anthony wins. <laughs> I don't even think he ever even entered it. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. Let's go and take a commercial break and then we can come back with all of our comments. Okay. Did you get anything on clearance from spring? <laughs> this is the day to go to like Hobby Lobby and like all the stores. If you want anything with a chicken on it, a bunny on it, however you're decorating. Speaking of spring, what happened to our spring? So one day... We go out and it's in the 50s, 60s, maybe 70s. The other day, Anthony and I go the, to cut the church and we decide we're going to do all the hedges. It's like 95 degrees. Right. The next morning we wake up and it's like 70. And I looked at Anthony, I'm like, where was this yesterday? 
Like it's, timing it, it's it. like we have no idea of what spring is down here. It's either 70 or it's 90. There's no in between like spring is in the air kind of thing. You know what though? I am not complaining. I, I saw a comment from Gail that said she was like bundled up. It was 30 degrees where she was at. Like, no, thank you. Are you ready to get bundled up? We're going to New York. I, I'm ready for some hills. We don't know hills. what the weather is going to be like up there. Just pack everything. The good news is we are a turtle. We can pack yes. like long sleeves and short sleeves. It's funny. I was telling Anthony, this trip is going to decide whether I should upgrade my truck in the next year. Like, can really? my gas truck handle the... I love my gas truck. I had diesels for years. I love diesels. But diesels are really expensive and they're expensive to maintain. And you don't really need it down here because we don't have hills. But... I want to eventually drive cross country. Yeah. So we're going up. And if you don't know, we're going to visit my mom. And I, I was thinking today, I haven't seen my mom in like a year and a half. And so I, I'm excited to be able to see her. She doesn't know we're coming. My sister knows we're coming. And I, I'm, you know, I always say like, I like making you cry. Oh, she's going to I'm, I'm looking forward to making my mom cry. In a good way. In a good way. I'm just looking forward to her not knowing I'm coming and just like, being excited to see us. Do you think she'll be more excited to see you or the stone crabs you're bringing? Well, she doesn't know what are coming, so I think she'll be excited to see both you of first. Us. Yeah, but then the stone crabs, she'll be like, "We're done with the hugging." <laughs> Don't kid yourself. My mother loves you more than she loves me. I Aww. think. Oh, so. <laughs> she's I'm gonna excited. be excited to see you. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. excited about it. So we're leaving on the 23rd. We will be stopping somewhere in South Carolina. I'm trying to nail that down this week to let you guys know to maybe meet a few people. And then we're going to stop again probably in Pennsylvania. So just trying to plan our route. I can't wait to see all you guys. I yeah. This is going to be like the week of hugs. <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Just, I'm so excited. Okay, let's get into our comments and stuff. Now, first, we do have our adjunct professor of the week. And this is somebody who just has been putting up inspirational posts. And uh, we actually have a great one this week. It's from Margie. Hey, Margie. Margie has a very simple one. What's cooking for your chopped challenge? Sunday, April 4th is ham steaks. Nice. And what I like is she has been looking ahead so what are you planning and on? And saying, what are you planning on? So she's really promoting people like, hey, get involved in the CHOP Challenge. And I, I'm excited to see that. I really appreciate that too. Like, mm -hmm. I, I I love that. That That is such an encouragement. And I really feel like ultimately it's going to help people with meal prep because you're looking forward to eating that particular protein. Right, right. Now we do have one more like adjunct professor of the week. And that's because this person did something which honestly made me cry. Oh. And I don't cry very often, which you know that. You have a little. I have an extra hair. Fuzzball. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. So this is one's from Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Lisa said, challenge accepted. LOL, of course. Prepared for the next few days. Everything was on sale and all for less than $30. $30. And she literally wow. went out and got like the first week worth of the chop challenge food that is incredible wow thank you lisa for doing that and for posting the picture too and also the price yeah because honestly that really does bless my heart because i don't like putting a strain on families mm -hmm. i want to see if we cook at home could we really save a lot of money and i mean i've seen some people talking about how they normally eat out right. a lot. And so this is shifting some gears. They're doing it for the challenge, but I'm really hoping that they actually save money. Well, take a look at, I mean, she says less than $30. That's look a at, lot there's of There's a food. lot of stuff there. And because look, I'm seeing special. Yes. I'm seeing special. She's like us. Her meat is special, but she's got pork there. She's got a chicken there. She's got some black Angus, some ribeyes. I mean, that is a lot of food for 30 bucks. We're collecting the same yellow special stickers. <laughs> Our sticker book and her sticker book looks the same. I honestly want to say, I mean, it made me cry because it really touches us to see people embrace these challenges yes. that we come up with and we're like, is somebody gonna wanna do this? And it really touches us that you guys embrace it when we come up with these, you know, sometimes silly, sometimes fun, but sometimes serious challenges. Thank you. So uh, we do have our subscriber of the week. Now this is somebody who put their story over on Facebook or mailed it to us, emailed it to us, and just their progress. And we wanna remind you, please, Go and put your story if you haven't done it over in the Facebook group. Uh, if you don't have Facebook, you can send it to us at stories at twocrazyketos.com. 
And again, you don't have to be at the end of your journey. You can have a success story that, you know, for the first, you know, time in your life, you've had a week without eating like a bunch of cookies or whatever it may be. You don't have to be at the end of your journey. No, and if you're just in the need of celebrating you're a win. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we get in a very negative headspace and we're just so down on ourselves. And maybe if you just need to do it as like a therapeutic way of, I need to find something good about Rachel. I cannot continue <laughs> to, to keep getting on myself. Right. Like if you need a win and you're and same for you, Joe, yep. like I loved you saying like, I look good in this shirt. I like this color on me. If you need to share a win, Share it. Right, right. And it's going to help somebody else too, but it's also going to help you to just celebrate your win. Well, this week's subscriber of the week is Debbie. Hey, Debbie. Debbie said, I have posted in the past that I've been at a stall for roughly six or so months, up a few pounds, down a few pounds, but never breaking 180. My initial loss since I started keto 15 months ago has only been about 40 pounds. That's incredible. My clothes size has gone from a women's plus size 2022 20, to now I can wear a size 8 to 12, wow. depending on the brand. I can also wear a sweater or a lab coat under my jacket, which I never could before. All of this is because I changed my grams of protein to 145 and my grams of fat and carbs to 130 yes. and 15 respectively. Awesome. It was hard to get used to eating more, even though I noticed that I am now losing weight and surprisingly inches. Wow. And once I wrapped my head around that, well, it's just amazing. So trust the process, it works. This left picture is 15 months ago. The right is March of 2021. Wow, oh my gracious, look at that difference. Wow. That is incredible. Thank you so much for posting that. Yes. Not just to celebrate your win, but there's somebody that's making this very difficult change. Mm -hmm. This protein, wrapping your head around the fact that you're increasing your protein can be very hard for some people to, to think like, is this really gonna work? Right. Or am I following Joe and Rachel's advice and I'm gonna be very disappointed? You right. know, so the fact that you've seen results already is so good. Yeah, and Thank again, you. now Bronson talked about during this challenge, you may gain weight, but you are not going to be gaining fat unless you're way over eating your fat. You are not going to gain fat from eating more protein. It just doesn't work that way. But again, if you want to see more about this, check out some of the articles from Amy Berger. You can go uh, check out some of Dr. Ted Naiman's stuff. I mean, right. he's got a book, uh, he's got a website. There's a lot of information out there about eating higher protein. Bronson talked about it on the live stream. And again, come to the live stream on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. If you have any concerns or questions yeah. and give them right to him. Bring your question. Now we do have one more subscriber of the week and that is Amy. Hey Amy, she says, happy dance. Saw my gold dress in the closet and thought I'd see if I could just get it over my head. Well, I need a new gold dress. I still have about 60 pounds to go, but when I started at 382 pounds and a size 6X, who would have thought a 1X was too big for my goal weight? Baby steps. Wow. Oh my gracious girl, you look amazing. But yeah, you need a new gold dress. <laughs> sure, that dress is just a little big. It's like Heath, right? Keep telling Heath, Heath, get some new shirts. You don't need those shirts I anymore. I love the one he the blue one he wore on Friday night, but yeah, like it's kind of like when you have a baby mm -hmm. and you save all of the cute clothes from the baby shower and you're like, well, I'm gonna wait until there is like a special occasion to put it on that and kid. And then it never works. They, they've passed it already. So yeah. yeah, get a new gold dress. And then, I mean, you better test it like once a week. <laughs> Okay, let's get into the comments. Our first comment is from Shannon. Hey, Shannon. She said, uh, so Joe, you know when you said you needed to keep your chronometer talk going so it didn't get boring? Well, there is no way things can get boring when Rachel is commentating. I think you got confused for a moment. Blessed Easter to you and your loved ones. Oh my gosh, well thank you. Yeah, well, it was the it was the the tick thing. What is a tick? <laughs> That's like a, a, a tick, you know, like a little tick. We don't yeah. dare, we're from Florida. We don't dare, dare use like the word chat or something like it's that. A, it was like a, it's a click button or something. A tick just no, sounds like. Well, it's not a, it's not a tick button. It's not a check button and it's not a slider button because it's like you press it and it slides over, but only that much. But so I call it, it's a tick button. What, what do you want to call it? I, I don't know, a click. <laughs> okay. Next one's from Carla. 
Carla says, um, I have to say, I enjoy you guys so much. Your positivity and encouragement always pump me up. Thank you for all you do. I'm not on Facebook. I'm planning on doing the April challenge via YouTube. How do I get access to the no joke workout PDF? So if you go to our website and you look on the top under our blog, uh, it is listed in there. You can also go to www.twocrazyketos.com slash no dash joke. And that will take you right to there. And on there, you will see the chop challenge, the full sheet, as well as two links to get to Bronson's, um, all his workouts. One of them is the main workout. And then the other one is if you can't do something. Which is it's so nice. It's also linked in our Facebook group so you can go over there to get it. I love that. Thank you for doing like alternative stuff too. And also for the chop challenge, in addition to the sheets so you can see the whole month ahead of time, uh, every day it automatically goes up at midnight on our website on the front page to show you exactly what today's challenge meet is. Uh, so the next one is from Vicky. Hey, Vicky. She says, I won't be eating every type of protein on the CHOP challenge, but I'm so looking forward to the workout portion. I dug my exercise bands on Saturday and have been doing a workout every day to get That's moving. Awesome. Thank you and Bronson for doing this for all of us. So again, like we said, you don't have to do both challenges. You don't have to do any of them. It's not a requirement to be a part of Two Crazy Keto's family or anything like that. You're in the family. But I love that like the Bronson workouts are inspiring you. So thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Shirley. Hey Shirley, she says, hey Joe and Rachel, thanks so much for putting together challenges and videos to help us. Mm -hmm. You have really helped me by sharing your keto experience. Gum was a major issue for me. I would just chew up bags of it and I knew it was a hindrance. When Rachel brought it up, it encouraged me to limit it and even now I very seldom buy it. That is just a small issue you've shared that helped me. God bless you too. Thank God for you. Well, thank God for you, Shirley. Thank you for your encouragement. We really do appreciate it. You know what the funny thing about this is? As I read that comment, I came home. I was sitting down. I read that comment. I had just come home from the store. I rode my bicycle 15 miles to go to Whole Foods to return something. And as I was checking out, because of course I had to buy something when I went into Whole Foods. Of course. And I look over and they have like pure gum on sale. So I'm like, you know what? Rachel's been really good. Once in a while, she does like to have a piece of gum. I'm going to treat her and I buy a bag of gum for her. And I come home, I hand it to her, and then I sit down at the computer and I read that comment. And You're I'm like, like, dang it. Did I just like derail her? No, I've, I've been really, you know, like Shirley saying, I, I've just been doing like a couple of pieces a day, mm -hmm. you know, every once in a while as a treat. Right. I'll tell you what, when you're buying the pure, it sets it's the bar expensive. up because it's so expensive. When you could, when I used to, you know, drink when i used to eat uh the dollar packs of gum do it i could blow through an entire pack of that but like the pure it it's a it's a little expensive uh next one is from melissa hey melissa Melissa said i love the chop challenge and my non-keto fiance is on board for it Yay. too this is going to be a good opportunity to dig through my freezers instead of making the same few dishes because i actually have almost everything on the challenge wow. list we bought a half a cow a whole pig and my mother-in-law was given eight whole chickens and several bags of chicken pieces nice. at a senior food giveaway and did not have room for all of it except bologna I cannot stand the smell of that, and I do not ever have it in my house. Okay. I will probably do the chicken thighs that day because on the 3rd, I'm going to Texas Roadhouse and will definitely be doing prime rib as my one meal that day. I highly recommend it. I think that's a brilliant plan. And yeah, this is a great time, you know, for spring cleaning your freezer because a lot of times, you know, again, this is very inexpensive, you know, cuts of meat. You probably have some pork chops and you probably, you know, have some chicken thighs in your freezer because it's something that you know you can pick up or ham yeah i'm excited about it yeah we actually had most of it in our freezer and again we're the same thing like every week i go and buy a giant package of ground beef and i buy a giant thing of chicken breast and you know we pick up pretty much the same thing but meanwhile i have a full freezer worth of meats i'm like what am i doing am i storing freezer food for the apocalypse so it's a great opportunity to 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 clean that out and also yeah get family members on board mm -hmm. because it's a challenge type of thing that's kind of fun right and i don't think anybody's going to be upset if you make things 
like ribs or you're 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 trying to challenge yourself and make a steak. Right, right. Nobody's gonna be upset. Next one is from Sherry. Hey Sherry. Sherry says, I love to sup, but for me, I prefer to sit up paddle board. Oh neat. So when I told Rachel, like, you know, I said, What's up? if if you're gonna get into paddle boarding, you've gotta learn the lingo. I have it's no not idea. It's called stand up paddle boarding. It's called your supping. Supping. And I'm like, and you have an eye sup. And she's like, I have a what? I'm like, you have an eye sup. An inflatable stand up paddle board. All I hear is I sup. <laughs> I sup at this. Okay, next one is from Average J Keto. What a cute name. Hey, Average J. Changes other than weight loss. No more chronic back and knee pain. No more IBS. Way more energy and more confidence than I ever thought I could have. And that's not all. That is awesome. That is some incredible, incredible. We have several friends who have suffered with IBS for an extended period of time. And if you've ever dealt with that, like it, it just takes over your life. Mm -hmm. It really, really does. So to not have to deal with that anymore is so stinking awesome. Yep. Uh, next one is from Oval. Hey, Oval. Oval said, I'm excited to try the challenge and I'm a little nervous. Aww. I went out and bought the first five days worth of meat. Let's, let's go. go. I love that. Yeah, let's go. And I think it's just fun as a family to do this. And I love seeing all the pictures of everybody's meals. And it's just, it's fun. Right. It's just a fun challenge to do together. Yep. Next one is from Andrew. Hey, Andrew. He says, some people are just so rigid in their thought processes. I won't be able to eat everything on the chop challenge, but it's a great list to expand your options. And the Bronson challenge is sort of frightening, but I'm going to give it a serious go. And my 15 year old daughter is going to do it with me. Talk about extra motivation. That is awesome. What an awesome thing. Yeah, I actually was um, coming back from my workout today and was finishing up my five mile walk and I saw um, a mom who was jogging and her son was riding his bike behind her. And I thought, what a precious opportunity to spend time together to get the exercise in as a family. And I was thinking, that kid is super proud of his mom. Even mm -hmm. if he doesn't realize it in this moment, she's having this opportunity to like demonstrate with every movement I'm trying to stick around for you, son. Right. I'm trying to like, you know, challenge myself, you know, continue exercising and get your mobility in and, you know, get that that movement in. And, and I think that she's just demonstrating a life of movement for her son and she's teaching him a lesson right now, right, right. where she's at. Well, let's take another commercial break and then we can come back with all of our Facebook comments. What has been your favorite meal so far this month? Ooh. Leave it down in the comments down below. I'm gonna have to say it was the pork chops because we don't really eat pork chops that yep. often. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to always eat pork chops. They had pork Did chops you? and sauerkraut. I, I would like cook the pork chops in sauerkraut. Okay. And then pork chops and applesauce. Like, do you remember, do you ever see that Brady Bunch episode? And he's like, pork chops and applesauce. No, grandpa. Really? Not you never one. saw? Didn't you not watch the Brady Bunch? Well, of course, I up? watched the Brady Bunch. It's like a really good episode. But I, I don't remember that one. Okay, we have one more from YouTube that I forgot to pull up before, and it's from Callie. Hey, Callie. Callie said, "Best April Fool's joke I've done was the time that I was at my real dad's, and my stepdad was asleep on the couch at home." I could control Alexa on my phone and I kept making her go off in the middle of the wow, night. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, I was telling Shelly that uh, our Alexa is now basically a part of our family, right? Sometimes we just tell her that we appreciate her, we say things to her, but it's always funny to me when another YouTuber we're watching sets ours off. I, that Speaking of that, can I say something? Yeah. Alexa, what time is it? And, and just in case they changed their name, hey, Echo, what time is it? <laughs> okay. I'm not quite sure how to help you with that. Yeah, but I'm not talking to ours. I'm talking about everybody who's watching because we just made everybody's Alexa and Echoes go off. Oh, wait, you could have it one more name. Hey, computer, what time is it? <laughs> That was kind of jerky. Okay. And not beef jerky, not the good kind of jerky. So speaking of April Fool's, Emily wrote. Hey, Emily. It would have made a great 
April Fool's Day move to have Chris and Miriam supply Joe with peanut butter and jelly keto chow in the April box just for him. It would have been hilarious if it was just like a mock bag, but like nothing in it. So speaking of, first of all, speaking of keto chow, the flavor of the week this week is, I believe, salted caramel. Yum. Um, now, if you use our link down below, you get 10% off of your Great entire ice cream purchase. Flavor. Also, you only have, what, about 10 days left to order your May box if you want to get the Chow Club box, which you definitely want you to definitely get the Chow Club it. box. And, um... I did want to say thank you all for all of the encouraging comments on the April Chow Club opening that we need to have peanut butter and jelly <laughs> keto chow. Please make sure you are emailing Miriam oh my over at Keto Chow saying that we want peanut Miriam, butter and I'm jelly. Sorry. And I know they are on vacation. This As we're Joker. filming this, they have been on vacation for a week. So I'm excited to see. How many people sent her an email while she was gone for a week to come home to like a flood of emails saying, we want peanut butter and jelly. We'll take any kind jelly, but we want peanut butter and jelly. I'm a child. You are a toddler. <laughs> a toddler. Okay. So the next one is from Peggy. Hey, Peggy. Peggy said, Joe, did you know it's peanut butter and jelly day? Peanut butter jelly time. Peter butter jelly time. <laughs> Okay, next one is from Barb. Hey, Barb. She says, hi, I'm new to this group. I'm 67 years old and I've been doing keto for a month and have lost 14 pounds. Whenever I eat meat, I make sure it's organic grass-fed and eggs are organic cage-free. Always have either a salad or a green vegetable. I also fast 14 to 17 hours a day. Also take good source of electrolytes and roasted seaweed or iodine. My question is, do I really need to keep track of macros? I really don't get it. Okay, so uh, number one, now you do not need to track it. The, what you need to track is sort of your protein <laughs> and then your carbohydrates. You make sure you're keeping your carbohydrates as low as possible. You know, you want to try to keep them under 20 total carbs, but you can go up to 40 total so long as you're not eating a bunch of like garbage. If you're eating like fruits, you know, or mostly vegetables, not Whole fruits. Foods. We're not big. We're not big fruit people. Even berries and stuff, because you can way overdo berries. Um, but if, if you're eating like lots of green leafy vegetables and you get up to 30, 40 total carbs, you're fine. It's when you get into a lot of the processed or you know packaged processed products that it could be a dangerous load. Just make sure you're somewhat tracking your protein if you don't want to track to make sure you're getting enough. You know sometimes. You know, you look down and you're like, oh, I'm getting enough, but you're really not. It's surprising as you start you know, like moving into eating at least 100 grams of protein of how much we were under eating before. Yes. Bronson had a great post up about it. He's like, you're going to be surprised that you were eating nowhere near the amount of food that you should be eating. And But when you look at it calorically, if you're eating a one-to-one, -one, you'll probably end up eating more food than you were before but calorically be lower. Yeah. Does that make sense? So you don't really happening. have to track like meticulous. You know, one of the reasons you might have wanted to is just to kind of get a feel from it. But for me, for the most part, we don't track. We're for the challenge right now we are. But I know that like if I eat a 20 ounce prime rib, I'm good. I know that if I have a pound of ground beef and I have a chicken breast and I have a few eggs, that will hit all of my protein goals. Yeah. Now, one thing I do want to say, um, you know, again, for those people who are reading the comment, you do not have to do organic grass-fed meats. Uh, you don't have to do pasture-raised eggs. When it comes to eggs, I would say either get the plain ones or get pasture-raised. Don't buy cage-free and don't Just buy- a marketing tool. Like, yeah, the cage-free means they're in the same little tiny space that the caged ones are. They're just not a wire around them. So the yeah. ones that you really want to eat are pasture raised. Those are ones where they're out there eating your bugs and stuff like that. Even free range is a little bit of a gimmick where they're charging extra money. And all it means is they have access to outside, but not necessarily that they're going outside. Right. So it's just a case of like eat the cheap eggs or eat pasture raised. Yeah. Mar Morgan Spurlock actually had a cool video about that where he's trying to raise chickens. And he shows like literally they can take the barn, cut a hole in it like this big and put a two foot by two foot fence around it for like thousands of chickens. Yeah. And they could now technically call them 
free range because they have access to outside. But they have access to a space that's smaller than the area that we're sitting in, but they still have access. It's like, is that really, I mean, technically correct, but like. But not it's good. not a requirement to do keto. We did not do any of that stuff when we started keto. We slowly moved our way up. Right. So next one is from Francine. Hey Francine, she said, started thinking about foods I used to crave and realized people rarely crave foods that are good for them. Yeah, I mean, we'd be way better off if we did. You know, I never thought about that, but yeah, like, especially when people get started on keto, you don't hear anybody going, I crave a ribeye. What are they saying? Like, I, do I now. crave cookies. I crave a candy bar. But yeah, I mean, now you crave it because we've been on it for three or four years. But yeah, I think, yeah. When you first start. Especially when you first start. I don't think anybody craves things like, you know, do, how many people crave salt? I mean, well, maybe you. Well, I do. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I wonder if it is a craving thing or is it little kid souvenir shop, like you stop, you know, wanting to purchase things. So we, when we went to Disney World with the kids, I would always go to the Dollar Tree ahead of time and buy a whole bunch of little things that would go with a particular ride. So we're right. gonna go on Pirates of the Caribbean. So I made sure I had a pirate toy mm -hmm. because the kids didn't necessarily want the things in the souvenir shop. They just wanted something else. Right. You know, so they would bring a toy into the park, but when they'd get in the souvenir shop and they'd be looking around, that would remind them, I want something else. Right. Like, do you have something else? So I would give them, you know, one of these inexpensive things instead of letting them, you know, blow the family budget by buying stuff every single time we got out of, you know, got, got off a ride. So I wonder how many times is it that, it's not that we're necessarily craving like a legitimate craving, but it's like, I want something that I'm not supposed to have right now. Right, you know, you just like blew the mind of some parent who's got like a six year old like, what? I didn't ever think about bringing the toy in and spending a dollar instead of $20. Have your backpack. Like you just saved a family a lot of money. I hope so. Like you're going to the zoo, you're going to a butterfly, you know, exhibit, have a stuffed lion or a stuffed, you know, parrot in the back of your backpack that the kid can't see. That's the key. You cannot show them the item before they go into, you know, you're going to want to show it. If you're like Joe, you're going to want to show them the gift you got. Like, this is so cool. I'm going to give it to you when we get into the zoo. No. Now it's not new anymore. Right. You have to make it's it. Gotta be a surprise. Total surprise. So next one is from Natty. Hey, Natty. Natty said, no joke. After doing the exercises, I know why I must get a floor mat. Your feet and your knees and your butt will thank you. That is why we quickly ran out and got the mats for the garage because we had like a hand-me-down like tumbling mat. And the problem was it was like sliding all over the ground. Plus it's not big enough to do burpees and stuff. Like I was trying to do push-ups and like I'm half on the mat, half off the mat. And uh, yeah, knees and like tailbone. Yeah, just not comfortable. Now I still had to do my exercises outside for today because that rubber floor mat that we got from Tractor Supply, I mean, it's it smells, it needs some time to just air out in our garage. Cause I was like, I got into the car and I thought, what smells like pee? I'm like, Joe, did you pee in this car? And he's like, no, I didn't pee in the car. It's the mats. They like stink to start with. Well, they're recycled tires. That's what they're made of. They're smell horse like, stall mats. That's what they are. They smell like the horse has already been in there. If you do want them, they are great. You can get them at Tractor Supply. If you have a Tractor Supply near you and they have a couple different kinds, they have their horse stall mats and they have a three quarter inch thick one. And they also have like, I think it's like a quarter of an inch, which we actually use those on the patio, like for the grill. Yeah. But it was like $30 for a three foot by four foot of the smaller one or $45 for a four foot by six. And I'm like, wait a second, I'm literally getting half the mat for only a $10 savings. Like, no, I'll just get the big ones. And I like actually took up two of them and I cut them and put them over by the washer and dryer. So you're like standing on that at the washer and it's dryer. It's really nice. I mean, if you've got like a toddler mm -hmm. in your life or, you know, that's just starting to learn how to walk, it's kind of really good for them too. If you have like hard tile floors, you just have to get past the initial stink of it. I would honestly cover our entire patio with them, except for I think Grayson would actually eat it. He might try to eat it. 
Uh, next one is from Cindy. Hey, Cindy. She says, can you take too many electrolytes? Okay, so I actually answered this question in the Facebook group, and honestly, no. I mean, is it technically possible? You probably oversalted. Yes, but the chance that you're going to take too many electrolytes is so small because your body is not going to let you. So I did overdo sodium once yeah. on a 72-hour fast, and I was forcing myself to overdo it because I was just in a, like, I need to flavor thing. So I, I had just at that point, maybe a week before, discovered that you could take Redmond seasoned salt. It's so good. And put just like a teaspoon of that in hot water and it tastes exactly like chicken soup, even though there's no chicken there's no flavoring chicken in, it. in there. I don't know how they do that. And so I was like, I want flavor. I felt like I was cheating on my fast, but I wasn't cheating on my fast because I was literally drinking salt with some spices. And I think I drank in one day, like 15 cups of that. I, I, I figured it out at one point. I think it was like close to 12,000 milligrams of sodium. And then I was messaging Dr. Barry and Kim Howerton. And I'm like, um, why is it that I'm 36 hours fasted and I'm gaining weight? And um, both of them were like, how much salt are you consuming Have right you now? Have you had a bunch of salt? But, I, and then, so I was just like, oh, okay. So I stopped taking it for like 10 hours. And then it was like, the worst bathroom pyrotechnics I have yes. ever experienced in my life. Like a racehorse. So your body is not going to really let you do it. I mean, when it comes to potassium, which is what a lot of people worry about, well, can I take too much potassium? There is a chance, but you're not going to do it on keto because you need like <laughs> 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of potassium minimum. Well, that would be like eating five avocados or drinking five Zips Vizzes in a day or drink or like... 10 things of the Redmond Relight. Your body's not gonna let you consume that much. And that would just be to get the minimum amount. Right. Most people are not getting enough potassium. There's no way you're gonna be able to get 10,000 milligrams of potassium in your diet on keto. You know, just based on carbs alone, you won't be able to do it. So don't worry about overdoing. And if you do take too many, most likely what's going to happen is you're just going to pee them out. You're going to have some yeah. expensive urine. Right. I don't freak out about too many electrolytes. Next one's from Jamie. Hey, Jamie. True confession. This was the first time I have ever cooked steak on my own. Couldn't find Chuck Guy, but got a reasonable price on ribeye, so went with that. But the grill needs a valve replaced, and the griller was feeling a little green around the gills. But I was determined to participate, so I tried the oven slash skillet method that 2KK posted. I think I overcooked it slightly, but it was thick, and I was paranoid. But the family ate it up, so I think I did all right. That is awesome. How does that make you feel? Like you encourage someone to not just try a, a different type of meat, but to actually try cooking. There is something that is so amazing about cooking that cooking experience you know it's really a link to our ancestors mm -hmm. it really is because they weren't going through mcdonald's drive through and saying i'll have a number four or whatever <laughs> right and there's there's a pace that goes with cooking and families have an opportunity to gather together and and you're saying to yourself you don't even realize it you're saying to yourself i am special and i am worth the time it takes to create this thing i right. am no longer a 30 second nuke it or however long it takes me to get through the drive through and if you're if you're somebody like me when i had you know fast food I was eating it in the car. Right. I wasn't even bringing it home because the stuff that I was ordering was going to get cold and I wouldn't be able to enjoy it if I waited until I got home. So I was worth whatever I could eat in the car. And that is like despicable now that I think back to the way I treated myself. Now that you're cooking, I mean, don't stop. Keep, keep going with that because it's going to do something to your heart. It's funny you say that because... One of my greatest enjoyments, we're reading this book right now on love language and like what is your, it's how to, it's basically on, you know, getting to know your spouse more and learning what is your spouse's love language. And Rachel's like, I can't figure out your love language sometimes. My love language is touch and spending time together. <laughs> love but you. I know how I like to give love and express love to Rachel and it is with gift giving and like she, she's a pretty good gift receiver. I am not a good gift receiver. No, you're not a good gift receiver. I, I get very like, you know, 
like I, I'm one of those people that goes off into another room at Christmas time because I don't want you to see me open up my gift. That's fun for the family. Right? So, but I love giving gifts. And like I said, my goal is always to make her cry, like in happy cry. Like I'm excited about going to New York and, and making my mom cry out of happiness. Yeah. So one of the other ways I love, I love to show my love to Rachel is to cook for her. I yeah. love cooking for her. And every once in a while, Rachel's like, I'm going to take control for a little while of my diet and I'm going to do all my own cooking. And I'm like, I'm secretly like in another room Aww. crying because I'm like, that is my greatest enjoyment is cooking food for her. Like you're talking about like spending the time. And it's like, we love keto chow and we use it on a regular basis, but we try not to ever make it more than one meal a day because it's exactly that. It's fast pacing. And we use that when we are busy, but we always try to make sure we have one meal where we're really putting some time and energy into it. Even if it's a quicker cooking meal, like ground beef and eggs, but but when you spend those few minutes going like, I am worth the five minutes, the 10 minutes where like she's talking about like a reverse searing a steak, that takes a while. It does. Right? When you sous vide a steak, that takes a while. And you're telling yourself, hey, I'm worth that 30 minutes or that hour that it takes to make that meal. And it's the same thing for your kids because like, you, you know, you're saying that your family really ate it up. It wasn't just the food that was delicious and precious to them, but it was the time that you put into it and they saw the effort that you were making for them. And if you think back to your memories of some of your loved ones, maybe your grandmother or your mom, you know, aunts and uncles like cooking for you, was, isn't that a special memory when you right. would watch your Oma cook cooking something and knowing it's taking her time and expertise to put all these ingredients together for you. Right. Like that's what makes her like your grandmother and not like, and you, her grandson specifically, she's not doing that for every kid in the neighborhood. Now you're making me think of my Oma used to make chocolate chip cookies, but they were like cake cookies. Yeah. And they would, they lived in Miami. We lived in New York and my Opa would airmail them. That's some and effort. It, but they didn't come in the mail because, you know, it was this was like when I was little. Like, you know, this was like, you know, when dinosaurs ran the earth. So <laughs> we would have to go to the airport to pick it up from the cargo planes because they would come on a plane and my dad and I would have to go over and pick it up. And I was always so excited. They weren't. It's not even that they were like the greatest cookies. It, was it wasn't the, like getting Entenmann's cookies or anything like no, that. No, it was but the it intentionality. Was, Oma made these cookies from The oranges came from Opa's tree in the backyard. And that made you feel special. You were on their minds. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Lori. Hey, Lori. Lori says, every time a bird craps on my car... I eat a plate of wings on the front porch to show them what I'm capable and of. That is so stinking awesome. And let me tell you, I'm going to start doing that because we have a group of pigeons <laughs> that are always hanging out on um, a the telephone line wires. or electrical wire. And man, nobody in our house wants to park in the parking spot like where that's at. Like you'll see Anthony and Caleb like race home who is you know, going to get that spot or have to get that spot because yeah, there's some angry pigeons up there, but I feel like we could handle it if I just eat my Buffalo wall wings, like right in front of them and don't break eye contact. Uh, next one is from Christine. Hey, Christine got started with the no joke workout. I practice the moves and we'll do the complete workout this weekend. Thanks Bronson. It's just what I need. That is so awesome. That's really going to bless him because that is his desire is to see people live a better life. Yeah, and again, Bronson is very active in the Facebook group, so if you have any questions, go post it. I know he's in there every day. He's so excited to be working with our family. Uh, next one is from your mom. Hey, mom. She said, okay, give me my blue dot, family. I got moving today. Fitness will be my new friend. And I actually cook today. First I'm of all, so she proud. cooks all the time. She's she a great does. cook. But, she but I does love things. the blue dot comment. She usually keeps it simple because she lives alone, her and Bo. My, her dog. Um, and so she, she'll, you know, not put too much effort into it. So I, I saw her like, you know, assembling all of the meats and changing it up a bit. And I think that it's good to have that, you know, variety. Although I definitely thought of her when one of the days was the Cornish game hen because she, she loves, is, loves Cornish, game, Cornish hen. game hen because it is so simple. She cooks it in her air fryer and the whole thing is done 
really quickly and gets that good crispy skin she loves. You know, speaking of air fryer and Bronson, I don't know who it was, but I know Bronson was super appreciative about the air fryer comments. Yeah. Because he's like, where has this been all my life? Yeah, he like made a bunch of chicken wings and did bacon and stuff and it was so fast and it comes out so delicious because it just locks the juices in. If you don't have an air fryer, get one. Yeah, I'll leave a link for the one we use down below. I mean, we've owned a lot of air fryers and this one is awesome. We have actually had it for over two years now. It's the longest one we've ever had and there's no flaking. The inside yeah. stuff's not coming off. It works. I mean, one of the kids actually broke the plastic on the handle on the outside. Still and going. And it's just still going. I mean, and that was because they like slammed it on the ground and just like the trim piece fell We went off. through like four QVC ones. Yeah, every one of them garbage. Uh, next one is from Mary. Hey, Mary. Mary said, day one, no joke challenge. I did my Zoom workout with my buddies. Yeah. Use my 10 pounders for every exercise and even with the almost healed tennis elbow. Wow. I whine three times a week before the workout and I never want to do it. But then after I smile. It always feels like such an accomplishment and my energy levels will be off the chart later. Thank you for sharing that, Mary. Like, first of all, I think she's got a great idea there and that is the Zoom call to do her workout. So she's doing it with friends. You can do it through FaceTime mm -hmm. with friends or family members. Like that would be so much fun that yep. you're, you're like, hey, whatever I do to work out, it, we can talk while I'm doing it. You know, that that would be fun. That would be right. an incentive, right? If you're like, you can have a FaceTime call with the grandkids as long as you're moving, that would be a super great incentive. But also, yeah, like I'm that person too. I usually whine like, oh no, I have to do this. But I feel so accomplished accomplished later on that it's so worth it. It really is a gift. And I don't want to go back to that time when I celebrated how little I moved. How right. is that like, a, how is that progress? Like right. I did nothing and I plan on doing less as we move forward in life. I want to not only maintain my mobility, I want to like go forward with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have one more and it's from Carla. Hey, Carla. Carla said, six years ago on April 1st, 2015, I was desperate to find a better way to control my blood sugar. I was on four medications just for diabetes wow. and I've been following the ADA diet with no improvement. My kidneys had been damaged by sepsis five years earlier and they were getting worse because of the out of control diabetes. Yeah. On April 1st, I found a low carb diabetic group and read hundreds of success stories. Wow. I decided right then to try it cold turkey. I saw improvement immediately. Within two weeks, I dropped two medications, several pounds and was already starting to feel better. I weighed 378 pounds when I started and I now weigh 222. Wow. Weight loss has been slow due to all of the healing that had to take place and I experienced stalls the last months. But with so many non-scale victories. Yes. I have no more pain 24 seven. I can touch my toes. I can scratch my back. For, walk further without a riding cart, a walker, or a cane. I've gone down 10 clothing sizes. Wow. And my kidneys have been stable for three years. My A1C is 5'3". Um, my arthritis and my fibromyalgia pain are virtually gone. I am 65 and I still have 50 to 60 pounds to lose, but I am in much better health than I was 10 years ago. And the scale is not the most no, important thing in the world. Living life healthy is. Wow, you blessed us so incredibly and thank you for sharing that because that is such an important perspective. Like, yeah, the weight loss is great and you've done an incredible job at losing weight, just like just an amazing amount of weight loss. But look at all of that health momentum. That mm -hmm. is incredible. I feel like every day just must be a blessing when you're not having to deal with so much pain and and to be able to reduce your medications and and to have a bright future just to be hopeful for the future does something to your mind yeah. it does something to your countenance that you're thinking okay i'm not getting worse every day i'm seeing something get better every day mm -hmm. wow well with that 
as I go try to wipe my eyes. Um, <laughs> that is going to be this week's Keto on the Couch. Thank you so much for joining us. Have you joined us in the premiere chat? Now, again, don't forget Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time, we have our live stream with Bronson to talk about the April No Joke Challenge. Bring your questions. And then on Thursday, we have our live on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Bring your and shenanigans. Also... If you are a Patreon this coming Saturday, we will be having our Patreon only live stream at 6 p.m. where we'll just have a bunch of fun and play some games. Bring bring the nonsense. Bring the nonsense. <laughs> now, if you like seeing different videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way, subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.